The whole purpose of this event was to show us what Tesla is working on, not solved and ready to sell to you today, but working towards. Anyone following past achievements from Elon Musk and Tesla understand that by continuing on the path to solve autonomy, they unlock the next level for super affordable, safe, clean transportation and useful humanoid robots who might well become the most useful thing any human could buy. The cynics will say that'll never happen, just as they did with reusable rockets, just as they did with the first uncompromised electric car with the Model S, just as they did with the Model 3, the first mass market, more affordable electric car that is responsible for electrifying the entire auto industry. Just as the cynics laughed, mocked and ridiculed the Cybertruck when it made its first appearance and said it would never reach production, yet 40,000 Cybertrucks later, people are still very slow to learn what they have just witnessed with their own eyes. Tesla will solve autonomy. They have the solution now. It's just a matter of time before we see vehicles like this operating in our streets. And I cannot wait. Why? Because autonomous vehicles, as Elon highlights in this Wii Robot presentation, will change the world for the better. Something that, objectively, he likes to do. Let me talk you through the event and shed some light onto things of importance. Our first glimpse then, as Elon arrives in a robo-taxi stroke cybercab, after a quick lap, uh, making sure you can see his hands, so there's obviously no wheel in this car, there's no pedals in here, and then Elon took to the stage to start his presentation. He let us know that there were 50 autonomous cars in all that would be driving around, including the Model Ys, but 20 of them would be these then, the Cybercab. I'm just going to blast through some notes and some observations that I've made so far, but obviously if a Model Y and a Cybertruck got jiggy with it, I think this is what we might get, a Cybercab. Minimalism is key here. The best part is no part. This equals cheaper to build. Uh, it's going to be quicker and easier to manufacture. And after thinking this was going to be made of somewhat thinner stainless steel. Thank you, Dr. Know-It-All, who cleverly took some magnets with him when he test drove one of these. It's currently carbon fiber with a vinyl wrap. The reason this event was delayed from 8.8 to 10.10 was a changed headlight design at the front. Let's talk about these doors then. It's quite a surprise to see butterfly doors on a car that's designed for mass scale. Uh, for someone who does like to say the best part is no part and also creates these massively complex doors. <laughs> it seems quite fun to have, doesn't it? But there's going to be no denying these robotaxes. They are very uh, indistinguishable from uh, other cars, are they not? Just from this, these doors alone. So maybe that was a design aesthetic that was worth keeping. Imagine watching people in the street just getting in and out of these. Like, what on earth is that thing? They certainly cause attention, don't they? as any Model X owner might already know. As these are early prototypes, you could expect the doors to perhaps not have so much overhang in the actual production model. Inside, it just looks like a vast empty space other than a massive center touchscreen. You've got no mirrors in there at all, so no side mirrors, no rear view mirrors. There's also a solid roof, so for the first time, there's a Tesla with no glass roof. But of course, there's no rear passengers. This just is a vehicle for two. This does make sense when you realise that 90% of taxi or Uber rides is for just one or two people. And our eyes weren't deceiving as before, were they? The back wheel is slightly larger than the front wheel, it seems. Back to inside, apparently there's no door pockets, there's no glove box, uh, there's nowhere for you to be able to leave your uh, valuables and your, and your content once you've, once you've taken a ride. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? There's also no frunk. Why would you need one if it's just a taxi? Um, I'd expect Tesla to shove as much in there as possible and leave as much room in the rear end for people's luggage. Oh, going back to the doors for a minute, they of course need to be self-opening and closing just in case passengers forget to close the door, for example. But Tesla already mastered this with the Model S and X from a long time ago with self-closing doors. Let's talk lights. I couldn't help but notice when Elon was first driving these lights. Look at the floor. These like weird laser lights, they look absolutely awesome, don't they? And I love the light bar at the front and the rear, very reminiscent of the Cybertruck. I think they're really going to make this car stand out and look awesome on the streets. And here's the biggest surprise. Um, yes, you will be able to buy one. Expect cost to be below $30,000 once ramped up to scale, I suppose. I was under the impression that Tesla was just going to own and operate all of these, as, as they've recently discussed before. But um, 
I guess allowing people to buy them is going to be uh, certainly useful for, for those who are taxi drivers and uh, just want to buy one of these instead and send it out to work for them and reap the benefits and the financial rewards and tell their friends like this is an amazing idea to make money good opportunity yeah a surprise but nice to hear Elon also said that uh, you could buy 10 20 or 30 of them and, and be somewhat of a shepherd tending to your flock of robo taxis I thought that was quite sweet and expect production to start at 2026 with the idea of extremely high volume. Elon went on to mention that unsupervised autonomous vehicles, you'll be able to fall asleep and wake up at your destination. I mean, that sounds quite nice, it, you know, just to start with, doesn't it? But he also highlighted that there's only about 10 hours of driving per average uh, in a vehicle in America, let's say, but there's actually 160 hours in a week. Those vehicles could be put to use continuously if they were functioning as robo taxis. But that's the big one, autonomy. You will get your time back to choose what you do whilst you're in your vehicle, whilst you're in a traffic jam, whatever. You could have you know, meetings on the screen. You could choose to work from your private little lounge. I mean, I'd, I'd see it more like a sort of first-class pod. But unlike a first-class pod on a train or a plane or something, this is going to be extremely affordable for everyone. With no driver to pay and an electric drivetrain being the most efficient use of energy, this will be an extremely affordable mode of transportation for everyone. And of course, that can run on renewable energy. So let's put aside the cyber cab until when it's going to be built, 2026, 27, whenever. The reality of today is that Tesla have reached a point with their current full self-driving program where Teslas are already autonomously driving around our streets, sometimes for hours at a time, intervention free. And this is ever improving. So unsupervised FSD is to start in Texas and California next year with all Teslas that have hardware three and above. Anyone who has full self-driving in their Teslas will be able to have their Tesla join the RoboTaxi network and operate as a fully autonomous vehicle, just as this Cybercab will in the future. Now, yes, there's going to be different regulations for different places around the world for autonomy at this scale to exist, but Tesla has the solution. It's scalable to the entire globe. I'm not going to get into it all this now because I'll never get through this video if I start going down that route. One wonderful part of the presentation was this. It was giving the sense of what the future will look like in cities when you've got so many car parks or as you call it in America, parking lots. Elon said he would like to take the ing lots out of parking lots, which would leave you with parks like this. Because at the moment, massive areas of our land is taken up by car parks. In a future world of robo-taxis and where you don't have the car ownership model anymore, we can transform our planet and our cities into far more nicer places to be. Isn't this a nice thing to at least work towards instead of cynically bashing away as a stupid idea? I can't be the only one who wants to see a better future, one that looks like this, rather than our current state of affairs for towns, cities and the planet. And it's a bit difficult to argue against this one, isn't it? This is the world we want. As Elon stated at the beginning, we want a fun, exciting future, not a bleak and dismal one. Today's transport is a pain. It costs too much. It's not safe and it's not sustainable. I mean, remember the original benefit of electric vehicles. They can run on sustainable energy. So when we do have a grid that's powered by renewable energy that's powering our electric cars that then makes them autonomous, it's just a great thing to aim towards compared to our current solution of just burning everything. Anyway, this robo taxi is also going to have induction charging, so you won't have a charge point on it. You just park over a pad and it would charge. Marvellous. And another part of the presentation that got whipped over quite quickly was the cleaning robots. Look at this. It's exactly as I described in a video I did a little while ago regarding Tesla's patented self-cleaning solution. So I'll line it up next. It's a fascinating video on how you'd go about cleaning these robo taxis. Now, clearly the coolest thing of the night was this thing, the Reboven as Elon kept calling it. Uh, it's a bit of a play on words there. It's a robovan. So it looks super modern, kind of like a, I don't know, funky modern tram, train, pod, bus thing. Now, this is very reminiscent from this very old image, isn't it? Taken from the idea of the uh, boring tunnels for a long time ago from Tesla. Similar sort of pod. Will it fit in a boring tunnel? It looks a bit tight, doesn't it? But it might do. I mean, the future should look like the future. And uh, there's no doubt about it. If this was coming at you, you would think you're in the future, wouldn't you? It's designed to carry about 20 people, but from looking at the seats inside, I'd guess there's seating for 14 and six standing. There's a pair of glass strips that you'll notice go over the vehicle and down over the front, which is pretty cool. 
and uh, glass sides as well where the doors are, and then just a screen either end. It looks beautiful and light and spacious once you're inside, doesn't it? I didn't notice any seat belts or anything. You wonder whether you'd need those in the future. Wouldn't, uh, if everything was autonomous, you wouldn't need seat belts, but you're still going to have other people on the road in non autonomous vehicles that could smack into you. So, probably put some seat belts in it, is what I'm saying. So, to end the event, there was a massive great line of Optimi just waiting to come out and mingle amongst the guests. Now, if you understand Tesla's solution to solving autonomy for vehicles, then you understand that that very same technology can just be plopped into the head of Optimus. And hey presto, you've got a fully functioning, able to walk around the world, learn new tasks, function amongst us, robots. And the implications of the usefulness of a humanoid robot is pretty much off the charts, isn't it? I mean, it would be able to do anything a human can do, only it would be far smarter. That's the terrifying bit, isn't it? But long term, they could be a teacher. They could do the babysitting. They could do chores. It could be the best product ever of any kind for anyone to buy. An autonomous assistant from Tesla might cost you something between twenty or thirty thousand um, dollars, certainly less than the cost of a car for the most valuable product you could ever buy. If you think your phone's good, just imagine what an Optimus would do for you. It's quite ridiculous when you really think about it. I urge you, have a think about it. Now, these particular Optimus look to be just Generation 2. They've not changed massively from what we've seen before. But I would guess that these are tele-operated, as in somebody is controlling them from somewhere. But remember, this is to give people the impression of what it would be like in the future to walk amongst robots. You just don't get this from Honda's Asimo 2, do you? And if Boston Dynamic robots were out there flipping around, jumping around the place, it would be quite terrifying, wouldn't it? So I think Tesla got it quite nicely with just some nice dancing robots and some of them were playing rock, paper, scissors with people. They were dressed up as a waiter, with a cowboy hat on. They were IDing people, it seems. <laughs> it looks to be a lot of fun. And of course, they were just walking amongst people. But just consider, it wasn't long ago when Tesla announced that they were going to start making robots, remember? And there's a person dancing in a suit. And now we've got this. Goodness knows how many Tesla bots walking and mingling amongst guests. It's incredible. But it's a really important point I want to make. Tesla has many advantages, but one major contributor is being able to scale manufacturing, being able to build millions of something, as Tesla has proved over and over as very capable of doing. Prototypes are easy to build. Production at scale is hard and reaching profitability is excruciating. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just an idiot on YouTube. But I see events like this. I've seen countless Tesla events in the past and the cynics are just like, that'll never happen, not happening, right up until the point where it does happen and it's right in front of you. For someone who just wants a nicer planet for my children and for the rest of the world, Tesla are building us that future. I hope you can see it too. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this event. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, patrons. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.